The Navy, along with aviation, are the branches of the military in which Russia had an incredible advantage before the start of a full-scale invasion of Ukraine and until now, but it's useless. Why is the country with the third strongest navy losing a water war to Ukraine? The last attacks on Crimea and Russian navy bases proved once more that Russian navy superiority makes no sense on the battlefield. In this video, we will explain why. Let's start with the numbers. Prior to the invasion, the Russian naval forces had a total of 266 active units in their inventory. The Russian navy placed a strong emphasis on safeguarding its coastline and conducting underwater operations, with a significant allocation of resources to corvettes, comprising 31.2% with 83 units, submarines, constituting 21.8% with 58 units, and mine countermine warfare, making up 18% with 48 units. The remainder of the fleet exhibited a relatively even distribution, encompassing categories such as aircraft carriers 1 unit, cruisers and battle cruisers 5 units, destroyers 12 units, frigates 11 units, offshore patrol vessels 27 units, and amphibious assault support ships 21 units. The majority of Russian vessels were considered outdated and had been inherited from the USSR. The most prominent examples are the aircraft carrier Kuznetsov, which was 32 years old, the cruiser Moskva, which was 39, and the destroyer Vadim Kulikov, which was 40. As of February 24th, the Russian Federation's Black Sea Fleet comprised a total of 275 ships and vessels, with just 58 of them classified as combat ships. When considering patrol boats alongside combat vessels, the Black Sea Fleet's combined combat-capable units numbered 74 by February 2022. In the months leading up to the full-scale invasion, Russia systematically removed almost any naval assets that could potentially be used for a seaborne invasion. A total of 46 warships were redeployed from all of the Russian Federation's fleets to the Black and Azov Seas. Under the pretext of conducting large-scale exercises, the Kremlin effectively established a naval blockade along the Black Sea coastline of Ukraine from February 13 to 19, 2022. The Mediterranean Sea also witnessed an unprecedented presence of Russian troops, consisting of 17 warships from all four Russian Federation fleets including two missile cruisers, as well as an additional seven missile ships of various types, including two missile submarines. But how have Russia's naval moves changed Ukraine's navy? During the initial phase of the Russian-Ukraine war and the occupation of Crimea in 2014, Russian forces seized 51 Ukrainian ships, accounting for 85% of the Ukrainian navy fleet. Imagine how bad that was. By 2022, the Ukrainian Navy's active naval inventory consisted of only 15 units. The contemporary Ukrainian Navy heavily relied on its patrol force. The service faced significant deficiencies across various categories and domains, primarily comprising aging vessel ships in critical areas essential for naval effectiveness. For instance, their lone frigate, the Sahaidachny, is approaching three decades in service, while their single mine or countermine vessel has exceeded 35 years of service. Apart from a couple of landing craft, which have also significantly surpassed their intended service life, the service possesses a limited collection of offshore patrol vessels, OPVs. Among these OPVs, the youngest hulls are no more than five years old, while the oldest ones date back four decades. Okay, so Ukraine's fleet experienced significant losses right from the start. But what exactly happened? At the outset of the invasion, Russian warships were relocated to the Odessa area. Subsequently, Russian forces managed to seize control of Snake Island, Serpent Island or Zmini Island, a small yet strategically significant island southwest of Odessa. The valiant defense of the island by Ukrainian forces, along with the defiant phrase, Russian warship go F yourself, played a crucial role in bolstering the morale of Ukrainians who had endured heavy losses over an extended period. On March 3, 2022, Ukraine deliberately sank its frigate, the Sahaidachny as it had encountered the ravages of war near the wells of a factory in Mykolaiv and was deemed unfit for further service. On the same day, another setback occurred for the Ukrainian fleet when the Ukrainian patrol vessel Slovyansk was sunk by a Russian Federation aircraft struck by a KH-31 missile. In early March, the patrol ship Karets and riverboat BK-02 Ackerman and BK-06 Vishorod were also captured in Berdyansk. 
Likewise, in early March, BK-04, Kremenchuk, and BK-05, Lubny, were seized in Mariupol. The small reconnaissance ship, A-512 Periaslev, likely sustained damage on the Dnipro River in late March 2022. The amphibious assault boat Stanislav was lost during a Ukrainian counterattack on the Zmini Island on May 7, 2022. The island was deoccupied at the beginning of July. Subsequently, in July 2022, the raid minesweeper Henichesk was sunk in a missile attack carried out by Russian aircraft. Another boat was hit on November 4, 2022. From that time until today, several other ships were also damaged. As a conclusion, the small Ukrainian fleet suffered huge losses. But it didn't give up at all. In spite of these achievements and the blockade of Ukrainian ports, the aggressor eventually faced consequences for their invasion. As of October 1, 2023, a total of 20 Russian ships and boats, along with one submarine, have been destroyed, marking two significant turning points on March 24 and April 14, 2022, that forever altered perceptions of the invincibility of the Russian fleet. On March 24, 2022, substantial damage was inflicted on the large amphibious ships Novochakask and Sezakunikov, while the large amphibious assault ship Saratov was completely destroyed. This incident resulted in numerous casualties and injuries among personnel, as well as damage to military equipment that had been transported by these ships to the occupied port of Berdyansk. Saratov came under attack from Ukrainian Tochka-U missiles, a Soviet tactical missile system originally designed for ground targets and not previously employed against ships. What a surprise! On the night of April 13th to April 14th, which was 21 days after the attack on the large amphibious ships in Berdyansk, the flagship of the Russian Federation's Black Sea Fleet, the Guard missile cruiser Moskva, came under attack. Let's delve into this particular incident in greater detail. So here's what happened. The ship met its demise when it was targeted by two Ukrainian-made Neptune missiles. The inaugural Neptune system, mounted on a new Tatra chassis, was assembled in August 2021 in preparation for Ukraine's 30th Independence Day parade. However, the first batch of missiles ordered by the state for the military didn't reach Odessa until February 20, 2022. Initial missile launches occurred promptly, prior to February 26, when three Russian amphibious ships departed from ports in Crimea and steered towards the Ukrainian coast in the Mykolaiv region. The Russians managed to intercept and neutralize all three missiles, but the realization that Ukraine possessed this missile capability prompted the ships to hastily return to Crimea. This development surprised the Russians since the Neptune missiles weren't scheduled to be in the armed forces' arsenal by late February. Following the failed launch, doubts arose regarding the missile's quality. In mid-March, experts from Kyiv conducted an inspection and discovered that all the missiles shared a single component failure, which had prevented them from detonating as intended. This issue was promptly rectified, and the Neptune missiles awaited an opportune moment for testing, which unexpectedly came on April 13th. You can't even imagine how lucky the Ukrainians were. Conventional radar indicated the presence of a significant target roughly 120 kilometers from the coast. In this sector of the Black Sea, only one object matched the size. The flagship of the Russian Federation's Black Sea fleet, the cruiser Moskva. Due to dense clouds over the sea, the radar signal bounced off the clouds onto the water's surface and back to the clouds. The Russians were so confident in their invulnerability to Ukrainian forces that they likely hadn't even activated their air defense systems. Even if they had, the Neptune missiles would have posed formidable challenges for them. The Neptune is a slow-moving, liquid-fueled missile that approaches its target unnoticed until the very last moment, making it almost invisible to standard air defense systems as it skims over the water. It boasts a maximum flight range of up to 300 kilometers and a speed of 900 kilometers an hour, with a missile length of 5,050 millimeters and a launch weight of around 870 kilograms, including a 150 kilogram combat warhead. These specifications are more than sufficient for disabling combat surface ships and transport vessels weighing up to 5,000 tons. The missile is equipped with a cross-shaped folding wing, and its warhead is activated either upon target contact or remotely via non-contact sensors. The vacuum-packed warhead significantly enhances the explosive effect. The missile's homing warhead boasts ultra-wide viewing angles of plus 60 degrees, can identify and lock onto a target from a distance of 50 kilometers, and is highly resistant to enemy radar jamming. 
By comparison, the American Harpoon anti-ship missile has less robust characteristics, with viewing angles of plus 45 degrees. Thanks to the effective deployment of these two missiles, the missile cruiser Moskva was sunk. Following these events, Russia's diminishing capabilities became evident. The loss of the Moskva marked the most significant military setback for Russia in the war with Ukraine, given its residual value of $750 million. Beyond the financial and reputational losses, the Russian fleet also suffered strategic and tactical setbacks. After the sinking of the Moskva, which served as the air defense umbrella, five to six Russian ships in the Black Sea withdrew from the Ukrainian coast. Imagine how they felt. In early May 2022, Russia attempted to fortify the vulnerable garrison stationed on the captured Ukrainian island of Zmini. However, after the loss of the Moskva and the retreat of the Russian fleet to Crimea, protecting Russian supply ships in the western part of the Black Sea became increasingly challenging. This vessel symbolized Russia's Black Sea fleet and was among the best in its class. Boasting an impressive tonnage to armament ratio, its primary mission involved engaging carrier groups, frigates, and cruisers using 16 Vulcan cruise missiles. The ship featured a fort, or S-300 air defense system battery, torpedoes, and helicopters. The Moskva played a pivotal role in establishing an air defense umbrella through air target detection radar stations and missile systems. Other Russian ships in the naval group relied on the flagship's cover as they lacked robust means of detecting and destroying targets. The absence of the cruiser at sea soon had significant repercussions. On May 2nd, two Russian patrol boats of Project 03160, Raptor, and the landing ship of Project 11770, Cerna, were struck by TB-2 Bayraktar drones near Snake Island. On May 5th, a Russian frigate of Project 11356R-type Petrel caught fire near the Ukrainian island of Zmini in the Black Sea, presumably after being hit by a Neptune missile. On May 7th, near Zmini Island in the Black Sea, Ukrainian defenders destroyed a Russian Cerna-type boat. On June 17th, in the vicinity of the island, the Ukrainian Navy launched two Harpoon missiles, targeting the tugboat lifeguard Vasil Beck. Although it was not sunk, the ship had to be towed to Sevastopol. Isolated from supplies and unable to sustain its defense of the island, the Russian garrison evacuated Zmini on June 30th. With the loss of cruiser Moskva, along with its long-range missiles and the relinquishing of control over Zmini Island, the Russian Black Sea Fleet's ability to deploy significant Russian amphibious forces and protect them against air and missile attacks was compromised. This means what? That Russia can no longer establish a coastal front along the western Ukrainian coast for an assault on the port of Odessa, which remains Ukraine's primary strategic maritime outlet. Prior to the effective use of anti-ship systems like Neptune and Harpoon, Russian ships would approach the coast from a distance of 18 to 25 miles and unleash artillery fire with impunity. The introduction of these weapons significantly altered Russia's tactics, as ships started to maintain a closer proximity to the Crimean Peninsula, avoiding any approach within 100 kilometers of the coastline under Ukrainian control. Both missile systems have an estimated range of approximately 174 miles when fired from the shore, covering nearly the entire northwestern portion of the Black Sea, but falling short of reaching the Russian Navy's base in Sevastopol. Following the acquisition of Grim-2 missiles by the Ukrainian armed forces, capable of covering a distance of 310 miles on a quasi-ballistic trajectory, and two naval drone attacks on the main base in Sevastopol, Russian missile carriers now venture to sea only when accompanied by boats, taking refuge near the southern coast of Crimea. Speaking of naval drones, they've been an absolute game-changer, altering not only the course of the Russo-Ukraine conflict, but also the landscape of modern warfare itself and it is primarily Ukraine that deserves the credit for this monumental development. Naval drones have emerged as a notable innovation in this war. In the Black Sea, Ukraine has ushered in a new era of naval warfare with the use of suicide sea drones, armed with explosives designed to ram into targets and detonate upon impact. Scott Savitz, a senior analyst at the RAND Corporation, commented that Ukraine has employed these explosive uncrewed surface vessels, USVs, as formidable weapons against Russian fleets and even infrastructure. Savitz's analysis highlights that seafaring drones possess a unique capability to carry substantial explosive payloads and strike at the waterline of ships, rendering them more dangerous than aerial weapons like missiles and bombs. Furthermore, their relatively low cost allows Ukraine to execute attacks with a large number of drones, 
making them difficult to detect by Russian warships despite their scale. Ukraine initially employed sea drones in a significant attack in October 2022, targeting Russia's naval base in Sevastopol. Following this, Ukraine developed more sophisticated drones capable of carrying larger explosive payloads. In recent months, Ukrainian sea drones have successfully targeted a Russian warship near a naval port and a Russian oil tanker. Each drone costs only about $250,000, yet it has the potential to inflict damage on or destroy multi-million dollar Russian vessels. As these drones are relatively new, they are compelling Russia to develop advanced defenses against them. How can Russia respond to such innovation? It needs to allocate additional resources to protect its ships, ports and bridges, safeguarding its economy and troop resupply capability. These sea drones exemplify Ukraine's ingenuity in outsmarting a more powerful and better armed adversary. Throughout history, wars have often spurred innovations in naval technology. The American Civil War witnessed the debut of ironclad warships, while World War I introduced widespread submarine warfare. World War II demonstrated the superiority of aircraft carriers over battleships. The Russian-Ukrainian war showed how good the naval drones were. However, drones are better suited for attacking stationary targets such as ports, ships at anchor, and hydraulic structures. Targeting fast and maneuverable ships presents greater challenges, requiring constant location updates, and although 154 pounds of explosives might damage a corvette or frigate, it's unlikely to destroy them. So, Ukraine started to develop more advanced drones. Civilian vessels loaded with military equipment make more effective targets, as they are slower and typically follow predictable routes. Instances of attacks on warships in the open sea have also been reported. You can't even imagine what a success that was. In May 2023, drones struck the Russian reconnaissance ship Ivan Kurs. On the night of July 25th, the Russian Ministry of Defense reported an attempted attack on the patrol ship Sergei Kotov which was believed to have been dispatched by the Russians to intercept civilian vessels. Some drones have the range to project force across the entire Black Sea. In November, they targeted the oil terminal at Novorossiysk, which was only 546 yards from the submarine parking area, as noted by naval expert Volodymyr Zablotsky of Defense Express. He emphasized that the Black Sea lacks safe havens for the enemy. Currently, Ukraine is developing and using various models of maritime drones. We'll tell you about some of them. The new underwater drone Marichka, which passes the first tests. The drone is designed to attack surface and underwater targets, bridges, and coastal fortifications. If necessary, an unmanned ship can transport cargo, for which it is equipped with several compartments, or engage in reconnaissance. Length 6.56 yards, width 1.09 yards, range 621 miles, price about $400,000. Another drone is the Magura V5 surface drone. Length 6 yards, width 1.64 yards, height above the waterline 0.54 yards, cruising speed 22 knots 25.28 miles per hour, maximum speed 42 knots 48.5 miles an hour, range 517.6 miles, and payload 705 pounds. Magura V5 is controlled via satellite or radio. The marine drone is equipped with a video camera and broadcasts video from it online. The drone is multifunctional. In addition to hitting targets, it can carry out reconnaissance, surveillance, patrolling, security, and demining. Controlling a drone does not require a complex infrastructure. Only a control panel comparable in size to a laptop is required. In addition to the operator, the device is serviced by several other people. Despite the considerable weight, no special construction is required to launch the drone on the water. A special feature of Magura V5 is the ability to work in a swarm of three drones. At the same time, the main one of them has hardware differences. Probably the additional equipment is a signal repeater. The Sea Baby drone is assembled underground at the factory in Ukraine. Payload 992 to 1,874 pounds. Range at least 435 miles. In addition to the Crimean Bridge, the drones successfully destroyed the large amphibious ship Olenogorsky Gorniak and the Russian tanker Sig. Naval drones allow you to effectively disable enemy ships and other targets in and near the water. The armed forces proved effective in sea battles despite the actual absence of a fleet. There are a few enemy ships compared to other types of equipment, so disabling each one is a great achievement. The Russians destroy up to 70% of naval drones, but the remaining 30% cause them significant problems. You know they'll cause it. The cost of the drone and the ship is incomparable. 
The creation of a separate brigade of naval drones indicates a large number of them are in service. First in world history, Ukraine creates a fleet of maritime drones, which has already compelled the Russians to conceal their ships. President Volodymyr Zelensky announced this development at the International Forum of Defense Industries on September 30, 2023. Currently, there are 134 types of maritime drones worldwide, but most are reconnaissance or training models. Ukrainian drones stand out for their pioneering effectiveness in actual combat operations at sea as a component of full-scale warfare. Although Ukraine's pioneering use of sea drones may not necessarily shift the tide of war, it could have a similar transformative effect. Ukraine's attack on Sevastopol marked the world's first instance of combining sea and aerial drones in warfare. They were also successfully combined with long-range missiles. Drones are a key component of the Ukrainian Mosquito Fleet concept. This is the concept that fast and maneuverable warships can deal significant damage to larger enemy ships, thereby being more effective. Currently, naval drones can serve at least three roles. Demining the coastal zone, conducting maritime reconnaissance, particularly near Crimea, and executing force projection and strike missions. Ultimately, we can say that long-range anti-ship missiles and naval drones force the Russian fleet to retreat as far as possible to those safe zones that still remain. Currently, Ukraine is working on destroying Russian air defense systems, ships near Crimea, and headquarters. Due to the latest tactics, the entire potential of the Russian fleet is being destroyed. Do you think an effective weapon against naval drones will be invented, or is that an end to the Navy? What do you think will be the war to war in the future? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more military analysis from military experts.